Well, what up, everyone? It's Ted here. Welcome to our second episode of Coffee Unfiltered. This one is about the coffee belt, different regions of coffee. This one you're going to find a little bit more informative uh, than our first. I hope you like the format going forward. Yeah, we want to tell you some things about coffee and things that will develop your coffee experience as it has developed me and Pat's. Anyways, this little intro piece I'm recording right now is on Black Coffee Friday, November 27th. Uh, Enjoy what Pat and I have to talk about here. Uh, Happy Thanksgiving. Um, One of the best holidays of the year. And Pat and I have known each other a long time. We have celebrated many together in the form of Friendsgivings. Man, I love that guy. Ah, I hope you love him too. Here's the episode. Episode 2 of Coffee Unfiltered. The coffee belt. Hello, good timers. Thank you for joining us today. It's Ted and Pat of Good Times Coffee Company. Hi, Pat. Hey, Ted. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, welcome. To round two. two. Round two. Episode two. Fight. <laughs> coffee unfiltered. Today we're going to take you around the world. That's the plan. Um, what are you drinking right now, Pat? I imagine you're drinking coffee right now. I am. I'm drinking a uh, cold brew of the alpaca, actually. Leftover from uh, the small get-together we had this past weekend. Yeah, we celebrated our friends given in a very different fashion. Um, we missed quite a lot of our friends. Um, saw some of our customers. Uh, in fact, special shout out to Jen. Thanks for the cinnamon roll. That was the yeah, awesome. answer to my meal. Um, <laughs> I didn't tell anybody about that cause I didn't want anyone to know that we only had one and, uh, anyways. And here we are. Um, yeah, celebration was important. Nonetheless, it's still good to feel, uh, the joy in our hearts and I'm drinking big Papa, which has been dr- just bringing me lots of joy lately. Um, it's funny though. We both said when we drank the alpaca over the weekend, we're like, wow, okay, this is pretty good. <laughs> like, yeah, it's been, it's been a while. That was the first time yeah. I'd say in, in, in months that I've had actually the alpaca just because it is, whenever we get it, it's, it's selling. So yeah. it's hard to get our hands on it. Yeah. Pat and I, we don't keep uh, anything for ourselves. That's pretty much how we, it's one of the hows of how we keep uh, roasting fresh for people. You know, if there's something that's past what we would like to sell to anybody, which is not, which is probably a, still a better standard than most coffee companies can keep. Now, whatever, I can only speak for ourselves. Uh, we got no problem drinking the extra inventory. Right, like right. It's the perks, perks of owning uh, your own company. Wow, coffee perks, perks, coffee perks. Yeah, That's another, let's do an episode on coffee perks. Coffee All right, perks. yeah. <laughs> All right, Pat, so uh, what are we talking about? Today is coffee regions. Um, this first part is going to be pretty much just spitting a few facts out for people who don't know uh, what these regions are. Uh, basically, it's just the where where the the perfect uh, regions of the world uh, are for growing coffee. Um, and we'll start with what they call the coffee belt. Um, it's I don't know where the name came from. It's people in the industry have given it this um and what it is is basically the region between the tropic of cancer and the tropic of capricorn goes parallel along the equator um and what that is is it's basically it's basically the ideal climate for growing coffee um and it runs through roughly they say 44 different countries um and through north america south america africa asia oceania um, Oceana. Yeah, Oceana, which I actually, I've heard that word. I didn't know exactly what it is, but it's basically the, the Australian Pacific, uh, um, the, the islands kind of off it, kind of Papua New Guinea for one. Yeah. Big Papa. Um, and like Tanzania, there aren't many coffee growing countries down there, uh, but they like to include it because Big Papa or... yeah. Sorry, yeah. And uh, Papua New Guinea is, <laughs> is one of the, uh, the main countries of that region. Yeah, that country, Big Papa. It's yeah. a big country. <laughs> um, I, so, 
the yeah. next and then this is the, the the second part of the factoids basically um factoids. what <laughs> what uh what make the ideal climates it's four it's four different factors to make the ideal coffee um rainfall temperature altitude and soil uh rainfall and this is all obviously what you're going to find within that coffee belt uh these these countries that lie in that belt have the perfect uh the perfect it's the perfect region it's um, the combo rainfall combo. you're looking at a very moist uh tropical climate uh a lot of these have monsoons yeah. and they each one of them have roughly two to three months of a dry season and within that dry season is the um the time for harvest basically is when you when you pick them um as far as temperature goes you're looking at 59 to 86 degrees fahrenheit uh mostly coffee is shade grown uh, there are a few that are sun grown, but uh, with shade grown, you're you're basically they, it's easier to regulate the temps for coffee uh, yeah. growth. There's a lot that goes with the shade grown too, and I, d I just want to mention uh, yeah. natural fertilizer always comes up when I think shade grown. Yeah, uh, birds have the ecosystem around the coffee fields have a lot to do with the with the coffee growing where it grows and how it grows and how well it grows. Um, but uh, further than that, even is the taste. Right, uh, right. And basically, uh, with shade grown, um, I mean, you can get good coffee with, with, with sun grown as well. Uh, but with shade grown, it's like I said, you can, they re it regulates the temperature and, uh, like any plant usually that's grown in the shade, it grows slower, uh, mm -hmm. because of less sunlight, but coffee actually is ideal at growing shade grown because the slower coffee grows, the more complex the bean tastes mm -hmm. is what they complex say. Bean. Yeah. So, um, yeah. When, when we talk about uh, taste of coffees, uh, you know, I, I, I'll just use our coffees as an example, but there are some other, of course, there are other great coffees out there yeah. that we don't have in different regions, not yet. But I think of Indonesia and the Sumatra. Uh, uh, to, to, can you to explain to me about Sumatra? It's something we don't carry right now, but we've tried yeah. it. We like it. Uh, I mean, Sumatra is obviously, uh, it's the big one that you see. You go to Starbucks or any, any coffee place. They usually have a Sumatra uh, coffee, which is mostly a, a dark roast. And that's obviously in, well, not obvious because not everyone knows. Sumatra is in <laughs> Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I didn't know. I yeah, didn't. I actually, I mean, uh, to think of it, I didn't really know until I got into this coffee stuff. So it's, it is a part uh it's in indonesia uh mm. and it for as far as dark roasts go it's one of the i i personally love it i think it's a great dark yeah. roast um and it's probably the most widely used coffee for dark roast just because it's the perfect dark roast flavor yeah um it's a you mentioned complexity so when people i just had someone uh try our coffee yesterday for the first time uh and he texted me this is after his first sip because he he's like i feel like i'm having coffee for the first time is what he said and i said yeah i know that's what i told you man <laughs> I, had, <laughs> I, I was not surprised and of course i was just joking with him but um the complexity is what makes the taste stand out it's it's the taste when you when you hear complexity really we're talking about what makes the difference between all these regions of coffee and the coffee and how they taste in particular it's it's so many factors uh, beyond just doing the right farming protocols to make sure the crop comes out all right. It's really a natural thing. Um, uh, and I, 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 it took me a while to understand, too, that it's not the equator. Because at first, when I heard the coffee belt, mm -hmm. I really pictured, like, the belt of the, the globe, if you will. Right. Um, and we're not talking about that. Because, like, down in Papua New Guinea, one of our beans, mm -hmm. of course, there's a lot of volcanic activity. And that's what allows for... Uh, soil and temperature and all the factors of precipitation and wildlife to come together and create this this wonderful bean. I mean, I <laughs> listen, I, I hesitate to call it my favorite because it's like uh, they're all my children. I don't really have favorites. <laughs> I don't. I I, right. uh, I just have different relationships. With them. It's uh, actually funny you uh, you said volcanoes because so the the last two factors is is soil, which uh, the Soil within the coffee belt is also, most of them are part of what they call the ring of fire, which to oh, yeah. people who don't know is the, the uh, tectonic plates basically around the world where most volcanoes are. Uh, and what causes, um, 
with all those uh, volcanoes, it's, it basically makes the soil rich uh, and it's rich with nitrogen and volcanic ash, uh, which like, adds a lot of flavor to, to coffee. It's like a nutritional soup. Right. It, it basically is. It's, it's the, 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 um, the bitterness, the, the sweetness, the, I mean, any flavor that you get from coffee really just comes, it depends. It's all the difference in coffee flavors basically comes down to the nutrients in the soil. Um, mm. And then the last, uh, factor uh is altitude and most coffee is grown high altitude um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's uh, anywhere usually from three thousand to almost seven thousand feet altitude uh and that also uh affects taste i mean all of this does so, so on our website uh, which with each coffee you have displayed on there the elevation at which it's grown and i always right find right there's the part of uh on the for each coffee there's not only the altitude but also the part of the country that it comes from each country has yeah. for the most part a, a handful of locations that are um they're they're part of the country that they grow coffee in so we list that too um it's really not important for if you're just trying to enjoy your cup of really coffee. Isn't. I mean, like this it is really all, isn't. If this is the it, complexity, and it's exactly, just, and it, I mean, for people who are in the industry, that's kind of more what it's for because yeah. they, for instance, I our, our most recent one, the two can. I remember when I was looking up where ours actually was from. Yeah, uh, it's ours is the Kupan region of of uh, of Honduras, uh, mm -hmm. which is there's only three real big regions in, in, in Honduras that actually grow coffee. And they're all basically along the, the northwestern part of the country, which yeah. basically borders Guatemala. Honduras and Guatemala have very, very similar uh, coffees. Yeah. And it's, uh, we've tasted Guatemala. I mean, yeah. pretty good. It, it is similar. It's, uh, maybe that's why we don't need it right now. Right. It's like, you know, right. Honduras does the job for us. Uh, right um by the way good good feedback on the toucan man that no, yeah uh, no, they, out people, pretty quick people, yeah people are really liking it <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome man uh yeah because when i was looking into honduras as a country as a whole you know part of the things we want to know are is this uh can we depend on coffee to to even make it out of the region in a in a uh fashion that allows us to use the product reliably in other words they're, they're not everywhere in the world is usa right so i mean we're dealing with regions and countries where <laughs> shipping coffee is actually not just like a logistics nightmare it's also like a political thing too and what you're what, what the farmers are allowed to do with their own product and such so right i mean you look at i mean i remember when we first started obviously peru the alpaca is yeah, our yeah. biggest seller and i remember when we when we released that um it, i mean obviously everyone likes it i i really enjoyed it i think it's a, a solid solid coffee but um not many at the time there weren't many coffee places that were we're selling it more have now uh i found that peru has become a more well-known coffee but uh, that is largely in part to what you just said is um it it's not as big as a coffee producing country as say brazil or colombia but that a lot of that has to do with regulations government regulations i mean yeah. a lot of them don't want to invest time and money into into exporting coffee um but that doesn't mean that the coffee is any lesser than say a Columbia. Yeah. Know? Um, people in the industry who were giving us tips along the way were, were saying, you know, it's Peru's good. Now we can get right. We can reliably get it sourced from there. Right. Um, and I mean, to us, it's always been available since we've been around, which has only been a short time. Uh, mm -hmm. so we didn't know that there were these difficulties. Um, and we're also dealing with, uh, more fair trade, uh, farms and organically, grown farms and such such so there's there's different regulations we feel better about uh knowing how these regions um they're probably not far from where our coffee is grown are other beans and farms that maybe just aren't as lucky yet uh to to have that what am i trying to say here pat that it's not it's not like it's a given that everywhere is going to be fair trade you really got to say right. that out it's the the fair trade really it's it's it it is in those countries that want to spend the money in in coffee i mean yeah. it's it's kind of 
it's hard to imagine that a country that is able to grow coffee, which like we said, there really overall isn't that many coffees in the world that are capable of growing coffee. And to think that the ones that do lie within the coffee belt, there are a lot of them that they just don't, the governments just don't want to really put the money into it. And, and by doing that takes away from uh, fair trade. And I mean, if, for those who don't know what fair trade is, it's basically, um, it's, it's basically putting money into the farms that actually grow um, and harvest the, the, the crop. A, yeah. a lot of, a lot of farms, these farmers don't really see a lot of return in, in cash flow for the amount of coffee that they're producing. They, it's, yeah. uh, I mean, they're, they're selling a lot, uh, but they're not seeing a return. And with fair trade, uh, the, that makes them basically just get, paid better and and treat it's better treatment yeah. for their employees yeah i got no problem with paying the man more uh per, for his product his her for their family product really um when we know i mean first off it's better tasting i mean like the right. quality right. is there and, and right. in the way that we do it we we can you know stand by that but we want we it's more than just a product like this touches lives uh around the world it touches right. families around the world so right um i mean it's our, our little piece of it you know yeah i mean you think about i mean i i'd say the biggest thing with the news recently is uh, i don't know if you hear this but the hurricane that just hit uh central america uh I think it was Iota, which was like mm -hmm. two weeks ago. And it just ravished uh, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, which uh, obviously, man. I mean, we, we have two coffees right there from that industry, yeah. from that area. And yeah. um, it, I mean, we're, we'll see what, how that affects the coffee industry. You would assume it, it would. Uh, I would, yeah, we, we can't know. And we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll stand by it. And, and yeah. yeah. Um, where would you want to go out of any of these places? Where are we visiting first? I we mean, next, but we haven't visited any of them. Yeah, I, I mean, when we started this, I remember we've talked about we wanted to we wanted to kind of use use this this business to to kind of explore these areas. And I, I mean, I would say anywhere I would start in Central or South America, I'd probably say um, Peru. Um, yeah, let's go. To just Peru. because because one, that's our biggest seller, and I I, I think it's become a a big coffee exporting country also it's just beautiful um yeah but i feel like once once you're down there you can kind of explore the, the surrounding countries as well i have family who has a cranberry farm in new jersey now it's opposite seasons down there so when they are all done harvesting uh their cranberry crops which was october kind of spills into november um they go down, they don't go down there for like the other six months. It's kind of an operation at this point running itself. But I've been saying for years, like, let me be your bodyguard so I can go to Chile with you. You know what I mean? I just wanted an excuse. I've never been to South America. So, right. Me either. Yeah. Further right. south I've been is Mexico. And I barely even count that because it was like USA, Mexico. Right. Uh, where was that? It was for some wedding. Hmm. One some resort. You know what I mean? Nowhere near the coffee. I want to go where the coffee right, is in Mexico. Right. I would also yeah, want to go there with our Mexican region there. Yeah, definitely. That's some interesting yeah. stuff. And uh, I mean, so much rich history there too. And I mean, it's not like we don't have a little bit of history here in New yeah, Jersey. Yeah, just not as much. But... <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, well, that's excellent, man. Uh, I it, It's a little bit, it feels like traveling to me. Um when I drink Papua New Guinea, I don't know what I like. I really feel uh, maybe I developed this. I guess I have. It's hard to say where, where and when it started, but it's like when I'm drinking the coffee, whether it be from Mexico, Honduras, right now, Papua New Guinea, anywhere. Um, you know, these, these are opp opportunity and money isn't always there to go and time to go anywhere you want in the world. So, Another great way to experience uh, cultures and and regions of the world is to, well, other than research and read about them and check out music is another great way. Check out the Dancing Toucan. That that one was heavily inspired by the uh, region's music, uh, which 
is kind of this blend of Afro Caribbean, uh, Spanish, like it, it's just like drums and awesome fun party music at the same time, uh, down in Honduras, which is what kind of inspired, uh, how to even, how, how to, uh, personify that, that coffee. Um, you know, I can feel like I'm taking a part, I'm taking in part, um, with one of these places that we, that we source from. Um, right. So, I mean, you're basically tasting, you're getting a little taste of the country when, uh, yeah. When you drink this stuff. I, yeah. I tell you, it has boosted my appreciation. Um, cause you know, when you're born into life and you think, you know, you, you, your circle of awareness kind of starts real small. You're like, Oh, I live in this house. This house is the world. And then you start and you go to school and you're like, Oh, other people have houses. Oh, other people have parents. And then you, and then you have a job and you're like, wow, that person is, and you just like, you just kind of keep learning more and more about how more than what you know exists out there in the world. And that's where I am with like coffee right now. Like I just keep learning more and more about our regions and it feels like it's expanding. Um, just my, my awareness of how everything really is connected in this world. And, uh, if you like coffee at all, uh, you bet your sweet buns, you better be very thankful for the, for the belt. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. So, uh, there's a, there's a real connection, um, that we have and I hope everyone can just experience when taking their next sip, you know, a little bit of appreciation and just nodding your head in the direction of the country. I have to think about which way is South. Uh, I'm facing South right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Blessings from you, Honduras. I'm talking about you right now, but I'm drinking Big Papa, and I don't even know how to find out where Big Papa is right now to me in reference to my location. Because that one, what's, what's so interesting about the region of Papua New Guinea to me is how friggin' far away it is, and I'm like, wow. Yeah, I mean, it's basically people. from from us. I'd say it's it's easily the farthest away yeah. distance from from where we're at. Yeah, that, that's like one of the first things I think of whenever I'm drinking it personally is like, wow, I can't even believe I'm, I have this coffee in my hand right now. <laughs> like right. It, it's right. impossible. It feels right. Like. And it's, I, I mean, I'll go into a small background of Papua New Guinea too, is it's not a very big coffee producing country uh, that I've learned from it. Uh, it's growing, but yeah, uh, it's just, you want to talk about fair trade. The, also the benefit I found with some of these smaller uh, coffee producing countries like Papua New Guinea is they said that uh, almost all of the farms there are fair trade just because mm -hmm. uh, there's only a handful of them so they can easily regulate it. Yeah, uh, it's coming up. Uh, people that we work with in the industry are impressed that we carry it because we didn't, I mean, we don't know. Right. We're coming into this thinking, okay, there's got to be more people who have this bean. Right. I mean, I, I, everyone I talk to in the industry that has that we we tell them we have a Papua New Guinea, they're they're impressed. And I mean, yeah. we've had people try it, and they're they they the quality of the bean from what they say is is just it's unlike any other. And that's that's what we've been trying to push on it. Uh, is is it's just it's it's such a unique coffee. I mean, yep. I I love it as a as a dark roast. I really well, like as they say, you got to try it for yourself, man. Right. But, uh, yeah, man, I feel like we, uh, we run around the world. So, yeah. um, good timers. Thanks for joining us yeah. around yeah. the world with us. You went. And, uh, if the closest you ever come to, uh, Indonesia or Papua New Guinea in particular is drinking our coffee, well, then I'm blessed to be a part of that. So, uh, thank you all once yeah, again. Thanks for joining us again. Yes, indeed. Check us out, gtcoffeeco.com. Uh, search Good Times Coffee Company on Instagram. Of course, you'll find us there. Uh, try the coffee, and we love you. We love ourselves, too. And the coffee loves us, and we love our coffee. There's a lot of love here. All right? Love you, Pat. Love you, too, Dad. Peace, brother. See you. Bye.